if you if you're, your client is a teenager or a kid, go for TikTok. Yes. But if your client has gray hair like I do, forget it. They're, they won't be on TikTok and Tinder and all that stuff. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. I'm Nata, host of the Nata PR School podcast. You're a successful entrepreneur or marketing manager, and you're about to launch a new product or service, or you've been selling your goods for quite some time, but you want to learn how to increase your visibility, get known, and reach more clients? At Nata PR, we deal with real clients every day, and we'll teach you simple, fun, and honest PR solutions. You'll learn easy steps to combine PR to social media right now. Keep listening and let's get started. Bonjour, hello, and welcome to the, the 155th, yes, 155, <laughs> I know it's incredible, episode of the Nata PR School podcast. And today I have the great pleasure to have an, an incredible, incredible guest. You'll see he has so much to share with you. I'm so pleased that he accepted my invitation, Jean-Yves Dion. And as you know, I always like to do long presentation before I let them speak. And you'll see why, because he has so much to tell us. Let, let me introduce Jean-Yves to you. So Jean-Yves is a pharmacist, a speaker, trainer, scientific advisor, and he's an, an expert in what we call natural health products, NHP, <laughs> natural health product. And to me, especially, is a uh, really a personality that, that I've discovered through, I don't know how many years, he was a host on TV. Uh, he, he was also a guest on, uh, and he was hosting Health Chronicles on uh, radio for several years. So I, I've known him through TV, radio, and jean Heave defines himself as a communicator, a pharmacist, of course, and an expert in natural health product. He's also a speaker. So if you are a group of pharmacists and you want to know everything about natural health products, is your, is your man. <laughs> you have to invite him because he knows everything about that industry inside out. Um, is a, he's a trainer, a speaker, a researcher, documentalist, writer. He has a, a few books under his belt already and he's working on some books right now. What else? My God, he's done so much. And if you are like me, you're looking for um, different ways to improve your health, your energy. You have a hard way. Uh, it's difficult for you to have a, an appointment with your doctor or maybe like me, your doctor is not <laughs> maybe uh, decided to uh, uh, disappear and do something else and you don't have anyone else taking care of you. So you can take an appointment with Jean-Yves and he's going to really guide you through, you know, whatever challenge, health challenges you may have. And we'll talk about it a bit later. Um, so his knowledge uh, of health science, pharmacy and natural product makes him like so unique and you'll see very quickly, indispensable. <laughs> you won't be able to live without Jean-Yves anymore. <laughs> oh my God. With a presentation like that, what can I say? Thank you for accepting my my invitation, John. My pleasure, Natalie. And I wanted to say too that we met through some of some of your books, actually, because for many years um, I know you were a consultant for different companies in the health industry, natural health products industry. And this is how we met. Actually, we were hired as a PR agency to promote a book that you wrote that is no longer available. It was also in English. Huh? It, uh, yeah, well, actually, my I had the French version called SOS Os, Des Os Solides à Tout Âge, so SOS Bone, uh, Strong Bones at Any Age. Um, and that was early 2000, something like. Um, really? That long ago? Long time ago. Whew. I'm so bad with, uh, with time. And I know there's this crazy book. It doesn't exist in English. It's called Bon Stress, Bad Stress. Yes, Bon Stress, Bad Stress. Yay. But if you understand French, you want to uh, buy this book. It's very unique. Um, maybe you can have us. A... Uh, sure. It, it actually, in French, it's the first book to make the, the link between what you eat and how you feel. Um, because there is a, a strong documented link, link between the type of food you eat and the way your mind works. So, for instance, if you eat too much carb, too much sugar, uh, four hours later, you have a spike of adrenaline, and that will give you all symptoms of stress, such as uh, hypervigilance, uh, bellyache, uh, uh, 
uh, palpitation, uh, all the symptoms of stress. And if you don't know where it comes from, because it comes from your food four hours before, you will interpret that as a panic attack. Wow. And that is well documented, and I, I show you how not to get there. That's basically the goal of the, the book. So interesting. So, as you know, I like to present my guests. It takes, takes for a long time before I let them speak. But let me ask you this first question that I ask all, all my guests. And it is, who are you, Naive Dion, after all I said? <laughs> that is <laughs> a big you? question. Um, it is too easy to define yourself by what you do. Uh, yes, I'm a pharmacist, but I'm much more. Um, I'm a pharmacist that got out of there in the sense that uh, I'm more interested in the human being, the health aspect, more than the disease aspect. I'm not into the paradigm of symptoms, drug. I'm into why are you getting this symptom? Um, and that drives me and it has driven me for so long. For instance, um, I was into herb, herbs uh, before I got at a university, so a long time ago. I was looking to um, help one person at a time with uh, products that I would make a bit like my grandfather used to make in his pharmacy in the early 1900s. Um, and when I got to the uh, pharmacy school, well, all, the, all everything you do is standardized and it's placebo controlled and it's, it's uh, an, uh, aseptic. Um, so after a certain time, I went, oh, I don't like that. I want to help people. I want to talk to the person in front of me, not a statistic. Um, I'm, I'm the first uh, uh, cohort to talk about evidence-based medicine. So that tells you a bit how, how old I am. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to quit and go, uh, uh, go uh, do the audition in, at the music school. And I was accepted in music. And I met a wonderful person, uh, Madame Tousignan, that gave me a deal. I uh, said, I will accept you. You have to do this in the, uh, unle unless, only if, and only if you finish your pharmacy. So I did. Wow. I did music and pharmacy oh, in parallel. I didn't um, know that. That's so interesting. Wow. So that tells you the type of mind I have. <laughs> I can't do one thing. I'm, I'm an uh, ADHD well assumed, let's say. <laughs> um, so I, I, I didn't feel that I, I, I don't, I still don't feel like a pharmacist. I am one, but I feel more. Um, That's why I, I call myself apothecary, eclectic apothecary. The apothecary is the ancestor of the pharmacist. Eclectic means that I take the best of all the uh, thesis around to make something either new or better. Um, and that's what I do. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, as soon as I got out of the uh, university, I started doing temp work all around. And I met people that are all sorts of different practices. I bought my own pharmacy. I have training in naturopathic medicine, herbalism, uh, homeopathic medicine, uh, nutrition, and name it. Uh, and that's what I mix together. That's what I do. And you're still passionate and you're still looking at ev all, everything that's new, all the studies, the new studies. This is why it's interesting to talk to you if you have any like help or a strange wealth issue, because you know what's, what's, what are the new discoveries, what are the new studies, what are the and new... And I always ask the same question. Why are we getting sick? Why do we have this symptom instead of what drug works best? So it's the same thing, but totally different approach. And every single day I will uh, uh, download studies, le le read studies. Uh, uh, in the morning with my coffee, I'm head down in my textbooks, Um, whatever the subject, but always health-related. So these days I'm in the uh, major textbook on uh, um, therapeutic reduction of carbs or ther whatever, the acronym. Uh, so it's the, the, the new approach to get your health back. And it's a 500-page book. Wow, my God. But let's go back to media, traditional media, uh, social media, because this is a podcast about public relations and how to combine it with your social media. Um, and you and I, we have this, I, I, I think it's a big chance that we remember how it was before the event, <laughs> before the event. <laughs> so, but you... You still think, I know you're not as present in traditional media for many reasons, but you were for many years. So do you still have an effect from 
that time? I know that you've learned a lot, of course, to learn. From but... that time, uh, some people still remember me from that time. I used to be in major networks. I had my column both in TV and radio for ever. Um, and eventually it dropped and mostly because they moved to something else and I don't look like a teenager. I agree. Um, sorry. But TV and radio, sometimes they don't know how to... They, they think they're going to have like a younger audience if they have a younger, you know, younger... Especially. No, the audience in TV and radio... Well, radio is something else, but uh, TV, the audience has my age. Yeah, of course. So You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that being said, um, I did that and I saw the revenue going down uh, because budgets and blah, blah, blah. So one thing happened, what, which was the um, um, 2008 uh, uh, recession or financial crisis that put me on the spot where I had to rethink what I was doing. Um, the, company I was, well, the companies I was working for as a consultant, some of them laid, laid me off because what you do when the times are going tough while you lay off the consultants and the temp work. So I was... Cut the promotion. Cut that part, yes. Um, and so uh, that's where in 2009, I started my blog. Um, and at that time, I would write two to three pieces a week uh, on the blog. And then a few years after that, I started looking at um, how to invest my knowledge into something else. So I started the Academy... Uh, Academy La Potica, so the uh, Apothecary Academy, where I could teach all I know to other professionals to start in rooms and eventually online. Um, and then it, it evolved and we moved mostly online. And then something happened, bang, 2020, um, 2020, where my life stopped. My book came out March 10. <sighs> No, no. Okay, and uh, my editor tells me, uh, well, it's good stress, bad stress, uh, good book, bad timing. But we, <laughs> we made a bestseller out of it. We did it. Um, but that forced me, like everybody, to reinvent what I was doing from talking to companies to, I, I was already doing consultation, private consultation. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But my life stopped. Boom. So we reinvented uh, the, the Apothecary Academy into uh, what I call health concentrates. So trainings and, and lectures for everybody on various topics. The first one, imagine immunity, of course. Uh, and that's still online. Uh, they're in French, but... And that's the new wave where I've found that, okay, now I can talk to anybody uh, my message is re is accessible to anybody, um, and that's where I am. And that's where the, the social media came in. That's where I started to, since the media, the straight media are not interested uh, with me because they want everything free. Well, if I'm not, I'm going to work free, I'll, I'll work for myself. Of course. And that's where the so media smart. came in. I know many, many other experts in other fields that did the same thing you did. And for a few years, you know, they were like, everybody was very disappointed by, by that. Like, you know, cuts or you, you could have a big show on, on, uh, on any TV and all of a sudden, you know, they don't renew the contract because, you know, they don't think you're the flavor of the year. Oh, they, so. they tell you, yeah. they tell you, you're a nice to have, but you're not a must have. Somebody uh, told yeah. me that. <laughs> Yeah, but thank, thanks, thanks to the web, because, because of social media, because of, 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 of course, of, of the web, now all of this is possible. So, so you haven't, I thought that maybe you did like the, uh, but you were really at the beginning because we just recorded this podcast in French, so I have some, some information already. And uh, I thought that maybe, you know, you were uh, really active in uh, traditional media and then poof, you decided to go online, but this is not what happened in your case. Um. I was still the owner of my pharmacy, and at one point, sales rep from a natural product company would come to my door to ask questions because their head office would not have the answers. And at one point, one of those sales reps said, hey, somebody's got to pay you for that. So I became a consultant. That's in 96. And the consultant would exist only if the web existed because I was in the way in the forest called Rodden, north of uh, Montreal. Mm. And uh, to do the research, I couldn't drive down to Montreal to uh, the library. I had to know what I'm doing. 
Uh, so I research, and that's where the whole thing of doing my own research, finding out things, thinking differently. Well, I always thought differently, but anyway. And that started. So the web and my work are intermingled. Yeah, so because you're a, a researcher, you've always been a learner and a researcher. So you're always looking for the new, the last. Day. It is very, well, it's always the last thing. The last fashion, the last study, the last thing. Um, and what I'm doing on the, on the social media is spread the word. Uh, mm. Democratize the information. Because very often you have scientists that will talk a language that only pharma, uh, scientists will understand. Or you'll have, uh, I'll call them politicians, that want to sell you something. Uh, they will use arguments that are not always clear, make you believe that only that way is the best way. Maybe it is the best way, but it's never the only way. And my way of going on the social media is to try to explain things, to make it understandable by the layperson. Uh, I'm talking to someone that doesn't have a bachelor's, that doesn't know science, but I can explain anything. Um, the way to make things complex. I can testify. In, you can testify. <laughs> you, make, you make everything very simple. Even if, if you have this, all this knowledge, sometimes people might be scared that you have so much knowledge, you know, I don't, I'm not sure he's going to understand or be able to help me. Well, you're wrong uh, because you can really help, I, I think, many people for sure. And that's what I'm doing uh, both in the private consultation and the, in the media. And I've used for a while now a, a small tool called uh, um, StreamYard that allows me to do live presentations on many platforms at the same time. So I'm not stuck on Facebook. I'm mostly on Facebook because that's where my age range is. Um, and so I'm on Facebook, but I'm also on YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, by the head the side, I'm also on Instagram, though I'm not very... Um, comfortable on Instagram because it's too much visual um, and I can't interface my work with Instagram as easily as I can with the rest because it won't work for my computer. It has to work for my uh, cell phone or my uh, iPad. I don't like that. But anyway, so I try to be there at least once a week. Um, often will be, well, actually, I'm not structured. I'm not someone that will say, at that time, I'll be there. But you're constant. You're constant. <laughs> right? <laughs> I try to be. I try to be, but I, I, I don't plan uh, at this time there will be this topic ahead. It's like, okay, I'm into this. Okay, let's go. Every Monday, for instance, I'm usually at 1, uh, 11.30, Monday, Thursday, or Friday, usually once a week, sometimes two. I will either interview people that are into the integrative health field, or I'll talk about a topic. Let's say, um, for instance, one of my favorite topics is the vitamin D on, vitamin D, um, because I believe it's something that most people need, if you want, sir, or me. Um, but the vitamin D is something that every people that live in the North, and we live in the North, need. And it's documented and it, it does so many things apart from healthy bones that your immune system needs vitamin D. So it's, I will explain why is that. Mm. Not just it's take this. It's rare, even if the, uh, you know, the doctors and, you know, the health uh, expert, let's say most of the time, they're not into uh, health, health products, natural health products. This is one, one of the rare they will prescribe. Like they yes, to but even there, you see, even then, um, I did a whole uh, training for pharmacists and doctors on vitamin D. And at one point, just for the anecdote, one of the pharmacists that listened to me said, oh, I think I'm not taking any. Um, so he, at the end of the summer, September, took his own blood level. He was below uh, the needed of 75. So, oh, oh my God, I spent the summer outside and I played golf and I, okay, Um measured the nurses and some of the physicians in his clinic. Wow. Every single one was under the minimum level. Really? Okay. Next thing, took 70%, 70 people in his cohort of patients that were already taking the 10,000 units per week, which is the average prescription. 
all of them but four were below 75. Wow. The four that were above 75, those people were really fan of seafood and, and uh, fish. <gasps> so you see, it is problematic. Even people that take vitamin D are not necessarily on the same, the spot with a good blood level. This is so interesting. So this is why you have to uh, make, book an appointment with Jean-Yves Dion. And it's very close to Céline Dion. They almost have the same family name. This is what we just <laughs> said quickly. Two N, double N-E. Good. <laughs> But you're not, uh, you're not a cousin, <laughs> let's say. So that's you mentioned something very interesting that I want to point out because you said, well, I'm, I'm on different platforms, Facebook, um, uh, YouTube, uh, even uh, Instagram and LinkedIn. But, you know, you said, well, many of my, my, let's say, potential clients are on Facebook. This is what I tell many of my clients. Like, maybe you want to do TikTok, but if your, your main client is... Uh, if you're, if you're, your client is a teenager or a kid, go for TikTok. Yes. But if your client has gray hair like I do, forget it. They're, they won't be on TikTok and Tinder and all that stuff. Uh, so all the, what we have seen in the social media is, is a stratifying process where people will, will be attracted to one platform more than another. Uh, so the younger crowd has left the first platform, but the older crowd has got used to Facebook, for instance, because they can reach their uh, grandchildren and their children that way because they won't phone, for instance. Um, so we, we get into types. Uh, Instagram, I told you I don't like it because it, it's mainly based on mobile technology and it's mostly visual. True. I'm more a guy of content, though I do live and speaking, but I would have to be on that platform. I don't mind. But these days, I'd rather be on several platforms so my message will be getting across to a greater crowd. And you're using a, a great tool that I, that I used to call StreamYard for those who are interested. It's very fun because you can broadcast on Facebook, LinkedIn at the same time, YouTube at the same time. It's very, this is great actually. So you, can, you are live once and on many platforms all at once, so mostly. And you can invite people too, which is fun. I don't know if you do that probably on Facebook when you have guests, so you can have uh, I do that, I will say, 10 times per season, uh, 10 or 15 times. I will have a guest uh, because there's a lecture coming in or there's a new book coming out or something that uh, needs to be talked about. And they're all in the field of health, uh, integrative health, alternative medicines and all that th the, those things that it be a naturopath or a physician or uh, whatever. So I try to do that to spread the notion that there are more and more people like me or people that think differently than the usual medical framework. Uh, we're getting there. Yeah. I have a fun question for you. So Go I ahead. Not in French, but <laughs> do you consider yourself an influencer now that it's... A oh, my God. That's a question. Uh, the question <laughs> is, um, I personally don't think I am because for several reasons, um, I'm not big enough, I, though I have 47,000 people that just, follow me in French, which in is good. Market, in this market, it's huge. It's huge, but mm -hmm. because of who I am and what I do, and because I'm still a pharmacist member of the board, there are several actions that I could have taken to make money out of it uh, that I can't. So, for instance, I can't have advertisement because as a pharmacist, I can't have that. Um, I will not sell my emails uh, and my uh, address list because that's a way to make money, and I won't do that because I feel it's unethical to do so. There are many things that I can't do, and I will not endorse or look like if I'm endorsing a product or a company. And influencers do that as a prime uh, activity. They will endorse uh, places, products, and so. So, yes, I do have an influence on people because I have a message to carry across, but that's about it. So if that makes me an influencer, go, go. <laughs> but Well, you are what I call the, a real influencer. <laughs> Not, you know, the, the typical, uh, you know, sometimes it's a, a new mother that started talking about her experience and uh, mostly what we call influencer, like, I don't know, five years ago, that was not a profession. Became an, Now we call those uh, Instagrammers, influencers. There's no bloggers anymore. You see, it's kind of disappearing. Because people don't so, read. I know. 
But though my blog, I don't feed it. I don't write anymore about maybe once every blue moon, but I still have comments every single week on my blog. It still turns. Well, people do search certain topic and they find you and they read you. I think people read. I, I, well, some people like to consume. I guess new generations, they like to consume fast information, of course, but... Uh, they nibble. So use. <laughs> a bit here, a bit there, but they don't read the whole text. And I can't not ask you that question because in public relations, trends is a big thing. We try to follow the trends, especially when we promote something or we have a new client. So since you are a uh, natural healthcare, uh, health product specialist, um, what are the trends in that field? Well, there are several trends. Well, for instance, the whole trend of anti-aging is huge. Uh, and it's now we start to have products that do work. Um, collagen, for instance, is a major trend. You see that popping all over all sorts of product, powder, creams, gels, uh, tablets, uh, and that is upgoing. Um, you, the top seller of, of all time is still multivitamins. That's always there. There's several grades of quality, dosage, uh, and such. Um, but if you look at um, sports nutrition, It was big, it's still big. It's not going up per se, but it's still very big. Um, be careful at the additives in there, the colors and flavors and blah. But there are some good products there. Um, inflammation is also something big. So basically the omega-3s are there in that category because people are hurt. So they want to hurt less. So anti-inflammatories, vegetable one, a herbal one instead of pharmaceutical ones. And the other thing that we see more and more is evidence-based products that are on par with uh, um, OTC, uh, over-the-counter medication. Interesting. And more, more and more science is, is there, and people are looking for that product that has the backing of science, not just, well, it's traditionally used for. They want to go a step above that. So in a nutshell, that's what you have. Yeah, interesting too. You in, in the French podcast, uh, <laughs> we're talking about larger trends related to food, but it's also related to uh, what you just mentioned. Well, yeah, in the in the food, you have two major trends read these days. One is the vegan trend um, with all this fall the the quality and the, and faults, and the other trend is the low carb uh, side, which don't really agree one with the other. But there are the two major trends in the food, and you see that uh, vegan is the new, the new orange, <laughs> sorry, new black, um, and everything going ve vegetable and blah blah, and no no animal derivatives. Okay, and that that is there. It's very important. Um, I believe there's a lot of message that is not totally accurate in that field. But hey, there was paleo, but paleo just got down a bit. Uh, still there, but not as much. Hmm. So thank you for sharing the trends. I love that. It's always so interesting. And I, want, I wanted to hear a little bit more about this service, because uh, if you're looking for a different solution, I this is how I ended up, you know, booking a meet, an appointment with you, because I was looking for ways to, uh, you know, feel better, be healthier. Alleviate certain things. Tell us about this service. Well, The way I do consultations, all online, for instance, so people, and I do them in English, though my platform is in French, um, I have some English clients, so you can do Google Translate for the paperwork. Um, what I do, the, the consultation lasts in, uh, 90 minutes, so an hour and a half. You send me a health questionnaire, a food journal, and if you can, and hopefully you can, blood tests and other uh, test results that I can look into beforehand. And starting the consultation, I have read all that. I've done graphs and stuff so that we know where we're going. And I will be there with you for the whole time, listening and creating a personal strategy for you to go towards your goal. That it be weight loss, that it be improvement of menopause, that it be reducing medication or not taking the medication your doctor wants you to take or uh, withdrawal of sleeping pills, for instance, there are ways to do that. If, for instance, one example, you are on heart medication, on blood pressure medication, you want to stop them. Oh, you don't do that. If you do that, it's your ticket for the ER. What you can do is change several things in your life to improve your health, and then 
your medication will become too strong. I'll give you a target for that. And as soon as you reach that target, you can reduce the medication by half. That's called de-prescribing. And that's what I do also. So that'd be to improve something, to reduce something, your own goals for you. This is what I like because you're giving us um, different possibilities. This is when, when we, uh, I, I had this consultation with you and some doctors have their own beliefs and, you know, they sometimes don't want to go to some, you know, supplement because probably they don't know about it or they're just going to tell you, no, it's not for you. So if you have doubts about different things, I think you're, the, you're a, an amazing guide. So you can give us different options and then you can really explore, which I, I really appreciate because then you can try things and see how it goes, right? Well, yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> to start, thank you. Uh, but that's what I try to do. I'm an appointment with Jai right now. <laughs> I try to be the person that will help you make sense of things. So I, I'm, I try to stay away from schools of thought that will tell you, this is the way to go. No, depending. If you eat such a way that you believe it's, it's better for you and then you, I, you, you feel that you don't feel good, I will help you realize that certain things that you do eat may not be good for you. Or that is a wonderful food, but that the amount you're taking is too high. For instance, I had a, a lady and I I'd also do... Um, retreats at the spa Eastman there and the lady was said at, at, after consultation I thought I was eating wonderfully with my mountain of fruit for breakfast okay fruits are good but you need protein somewhere you need fat somewhere you need something else than just fruits even though some practitioners will tell you eat your fruits in the morning sure how many how much that's the point So good. So yes, go get your appointment, which I'm telling you, you won't regret it. <laughs> so before we conclude, I want to talk about your books, but I know you have this amazing project. You're going to move out of the city because you wrote a book about stress. So of course you have to be the example. Well, you know what? People like me write things because they need to learn it. Um, but Bon Stress, Bad Stress is the first book that Uh, makes the link out uh, between what you eat and how you feel, but it's more than that. But it's not a psychology book. I'm I'm not a psychologist. I'm as much a psychologist as Lucy and, and Charlie Brown. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a tool book to help you. And I'm in the works. I have several more books that are always based on the same thing. Understanding how, for instance, your metabolism work, what you can do, my uh, uh, Health Concentrate are all lectures and trainings for everybody based on helping you understand how you work so that you can get better. So the next book is mostly something on weight loss, not as a new fad regime or no diet, more like, okay, how does it work? Why is it that I eat like everybody else? I'm gaining 10 pounds a year. There are ways to work that and to help you find your health and your balance. Because if you have, like me, a French boyfriend that eats cheese, <laughs> every wine, every, every meal, and you eat like him, <laughs> he's not gaining weight, and I am. So there are some reasons. There, that's one thing, but I wonder if his metabolism is as good as it, it looks. He may look good, but hey. Yeah, maybe at one point something's going to happen in his health story. So, and I know you're moving out of the city soon. So what should I wish you before we, uh, we conclude? Well, I'm moving out because I want to have more time and less pressure. And I'm in the city, what I call the uh, orange cone farm. They grow like things everywhere and they, they move. It's funny. You see them moving. They never disappear. Huh? They stay there. They never disappear. Then you go somewhere, it's blocked. You change road, it's blocked. Anyway, forget it. So I'm moving out. Uh, and I had the, the chance, I'm very lucky to have bought a place by a lake before the pandemic. So yeah, I'm moving out there. So I'll have more time, more energy to, to focus on the long-term projects. Oh, amazing. Such as books. Yeah, yes. I wish you a long life because I want to read all those books, of course. Oh, It's that's so in good. the plan. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for accepting my, my invitation. It was so much fun and I've learned a lot about you. I knew many things about you, but of course, this is, uh, this is the chance to ask other questions. And find All out those about. questions. Yes. Well, thank you, Nathalie. It's a wonderful opportunity you gave me to uh, oh, my pleasure. be there. I hope 
uh, my friends, listeners, and viewers. I hope you'll be joining me next week. À la semaine prochaine. Hey, you want to learn more about how to implement PR strategies? Head on to nadapr.com and get on our list. You will also receive the Nada PR model on how to create a successful PR campaign. If you want to become a client, just send us an email to nada at nadapr.com. Talk to you next week. À la semaine prochaine.